This full color 3D scan you're looking at right now was made using photos from my cell phone. And this isn't some fancy LiDAR phone either. This is just regular 1080p camera phone photos stitched together into a 3D model. And you can do this for free with open source software. I've seen a lot of talk online lately about buying 3D scanners, but we all know me, I'm not a big fan of recommending a thousand dollar tool to do a job that a free tool can do just as good or better. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how you can make high quality, full color 3D scans using your cell phone, rather than having to buy an expensive 3D scanner worth thousands of dollars. The best part is that it's even easier than using a 3D scanner. This was a 50 second video that I took using shaky hands while I was tripping over logs and stumps and things. I didn't have to cover my car in baby powder. I didn't have to use special lighting. This was incredibly simple to make. And here are the results. There are some issues with it. There's some parts of the scan that are missing, but I could go back and refine it if I wanted to. This was my first pass and it was incredibly easy to do. This took me about 15 minutes. The process I used for this is called photogrammetry. And it's the process of taking 2D photos and stitching them together into a 3D model. Before I show you how though, I need to talk about the limitations of using any type of scan in general. When you're designing something on the computer, it can be really hard to know if it's going to interfere with things that are already existing in the real world. 3D scanning isn't used to get precise dimensions. 3D scanning is used so that you can check your interferences. This is true even if you're buying one of those expensive scanners that all the other YouTubers are hawking. If you want a precise critical dimension, you're gonna have to measure it by hand no matter what. You're not gonna be able to rely on the 3D scan. That's not what a 3D scan is for. The only alternative to measuring it by hand is buying an expensive CMMS system or computerized measurement system. And those cost tens of thousands of dollars. You're not doing that with a cheap 3D scanner. What they are really useful though is for a visual reference. Let's say for example that you're some clown who shoved a giant 6BT diesel engine into a tiny little Ford Explorer and you need to design an off-road bumper for it. The problem with this weird engine swap is that there's weird parts sticking out all over the place. I have this curved radiator support in the front. I have power steering coolers. My frame rails were modified in order to make the radiator support fit. The advantage of having a 3D scan is that I can design the part around the actual real world car and make sure I actually have clearance for all these weird geometries. Hopefully the 3D model means I can get it right the first time or maybe the second time rather than having to get it right the 10th time and modify the finished product. On top of all that, the 3D scan lets me see what it looks like on the vehicle before I've ever even built my first prototype. This really helps to make a complete and professional looking product. The worst feeling ever is spending all this time fabricating something and then getting done installing it and realizing it looks like complete garbage. It's nice when you put a lot of work into something for it to actually look nice too. So now you know when to use a 3D scan, that is for visual reference, rather than trying to use it for precise dimensions. Now let's talk about how to actually make a scan using photogrammetry. There's two different photogrammetry softwares that I would recommend. The first one is open source, it's entirely free, and it's called Meshroom. It's a node style interface where you work through each node one at a time in order to get to the end final product. The only issue with it is that it's a little slow and if your model doesn't come out right the first time, Every one of these nodes has about a dozen different parameters you can tweak and it can be really complicated to get your model just right. Sometimes it comes out perfect the first time, sometimes you have to do a lot of fiddling in order to get it right. Additionally, if you need to adjust your model at all, like removing the background and keeping the car, there aren't native features to do this in Meshroom. You'll have to pull it out into a different software like Mesh Lab or Mesh Mixer in order to do those modifications. The second software I'd recommend is 3D Zephyr. This is much easier to use, much less fiddling. The model always comes out right the first time in my experience, and it works a whole lot faster, but the free version will only do 50 photos. The version I use has a one-time perpetual license of 200 euros, and it works great, but you don't have to pay for this. You can use the free open source alternative that I mentioned earlier. The biggest advantage of Zephyr really is the speed. I can render a model in Zephyr that takes about 10 minutes that would take me hours to do in Meshroom. I don't know why Meshroom is so slow. On top of that, it's a lot easier to use. There aren't so many parameters that you have to play with to get things right. And the model seems to come out right the first time for me. One other workflow optimization it has is that you can start from a video and extract photos straight from the video. This is a little bit of an easier workflow in my opinion. However, you can also just download a free video editing software like DaVinci Resolve and export the video as JPEG. Regardless if you go the free route or the cheap route, 
the process is the same, and here's the process I used to make these scans. First thing I did was walked around the car and took a 50 second video. Then in 3D Zephyr, I extracted four frames per second. One thing to keep in mind here is that the software uses information about your camera, such as the focal length, to approximate the relative size of things. So when you're doing this, if you use two different cameras or if you zoom while you're doing this, it'll really confuse the hell out of the software. You can fix this by defining multiple cameras in the software, or you can just use one single camera and make sure you don't zoom at all the whole time you're doing it. Now that I have the 200 photographs, the software starts by making a cloud of points based on the photos. It grabs a bunch of different points and finds their position and their color. Then it takes this sparse point cloud and uses that to find many, many more points and it calls this a dense point cloud. Once it's done with that, it just connects all the dots between the points using polygons and it makes what's called a mesh. A mesh is an actual surface rather than just a bunch of points. There's one final step that's optional. What you can do is take your photos and use your photos to define the color and texture of the mesh rather than just averaging the colors of the points. This is called a textured mesh and it's way higher quality and looks really, really good. As you can see here, I can even read the text on the side of my tires by using a textured mesh. The problem with it though, is that if you wanna try and pull a textured mesh into Fusion or SolidWorks or whatever 3D CAD program, they often don't play nice with them and you'll just lose your color entirely. That's why this step is optional. Rather than doing a textured mesh, you can just leave it as a normal colored mesh. All that's left is exporting the model as a 3D object. My advice is that you import it into CAD as a graphics model. If you try to import it as an actual parametric object, there can be tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of vertices on the scan and it will not play nice with your CAD software, but that's okay because as we discussed earlier, you don't need a parametric object. You don't need precise dimensions. You only need a visual reference. So a graphic object will do just fine. Finally, you take whatever your critical measurement was, like in this case, I would use the distance between my frame rails, and you scale up your graphic model to fit that dimension that you measured by hand. That way you know that the model matches the real world because you measured it. Once you have this model, you can use it to design whatever crazy thing it is that you're trying to design. If you implement photogrammetry into your workflow, you'll find way less circumstances where you're having to modify your final product. It's just too easy to forget Crap, there's a hose here that I need a hole for. Don't buy a 3D scanner. Just use photos and photogrammetry. It's incredibly cheap or free, and the scans can be incredibly high quality. The reason I can tell you this is because nobody is paying me to plug a thousand dollar tool that you don't need. Nothing in this video is sponsored, and I don't make any money by telling you this. I'm sure I've burnt any bridges with any 3D scanner companies, but that's fine. I'm not interested in wasting my viewers' money or my own. Thanks for hanging out with me at the computer today. Now, Get out there and build something. I hope to see you next time.